Okay, so so let's let's talk about the transition. Your book, the the yips and everything. We are big time spin zone guys, mm-hmm. so I'm. We would like to look at it from a different point of view. You, uh, the Cardinals won that game, and Greg Maddox lost that game. Future Hall of Famer mm-hmm. at the time lost that game. People don't talk about that enough. So the game won, 2000 NLDS. You're up against Greg Maddox. You pitched the first two innings fine. Greg Maddox gives up six runs in the yes, first, which is unheard of. Which we should talk about more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and, then and then and then he switched his whole game around in that ESPN commercial. Yeah, because he said chicks dig the long ball. Yes, which you were also better. At yes, him then. so so yeah, so Alpha, exactly. You're, love it. You own Greg Maddox. We remember this <laughs> well, game. Thank you. I'll in, take that. I don't think I own him, but I, I like it. What what exactly happened in that third inning? Like, was it? Did you know right when away? When I lost it? Yeah. Did you know right away? No. Um, I bounced the curveball. And then, um, let me take that back. I threw a cutter in that just cut, and it wasn't even that bad of a pitch. And at the time, you know, the entire season, Mike Matheny was my catcher. He cut his hand. He couldn't catch. So we brought in Carlos Hernandez, who was just a different catcher. When I would try to throw into righties because I'm left-handed, so I was kind of firing across my body, I'd cut it on accident sometimes. So sometimes you have this 95-mile-an-hour fastball that cuts when nobody's telling you it's cutting, but Matheny knew that from catching me. But in my mind, for whatever reason, I'm thinking, man, I just – freaking wild pitch right like my family everybody's watching and usually you shake that crap off and it doesn't even matter all of a sudden I spike a curveball it starts to unravel um I had no idea what was happening everything that I had always used up to that point to get myself back on track wasn't working you know mechanically uh, mental thoughts um you know the keys that guys have and you know before I know it I'm getting taken out of the game you know, it's like I would try to throw a pitch, and all of a sudden it would launch off the backstop or bounce something, and, you know, I had no idea what the heck was going on. So, no clue. so after that inning, you, you get pulled after the five wild pitches. Did you go out later on that day and just be like, I've got to be past this by now. The yips are gone, and throw any more pitches, or did you wait till the next day, or did you take your standard amount of time, throw after, you know, two nights sleep? What was that like? Um, well, I remember saying to the media, oh, it was a mechanical issue. This will never happen again. Um, I really didn't know what the yips was at that point. Um, not even sure I knew what the word anxiety meant. <clears throat> because I was young, everything just came so fast. Um, the next day I came to the field, you definitely kind of have a little like, all right, you know, because everybody's watching out of the corner of their eye, like, what's this going to look like? But I'm playing catch. <laughs> Everything's fine. I throw a bullpen the next day. I was lights out. So Tony LaRussa calls me and is like, hey, I don't, I don't think we're going to use you. You know, like. I think we're just going to – so I went, went somewhat ballistic. Like, bullshit, this is my time. I want this game, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's like, all right, you sure you're fine? I'm like, yeah, man, I got it. So I end up starting the next game against the Mets and, you know, won a few pitches, you know, start spraying it all over. And it was like – it's this anxiety feeling where, you know, I can definitely feel more nerves than I ever felt before warming up in the bullpen. I remember walking from the bullpen to the, to the mound in New York – and it was like, all right, I got this. And it's like you throw one pitch, and it's kind of close, and it's fine. But then you throw one that's maybe not, you know, a strike, but the catcher can catch it. And it's like my mind goes, oh, no, here we go again. And then this feeling comes over where it's almost like I couldn't feel the ball. Jeez. And you go to fire it, and it's like you have this mini blackout, and you're like, where'd the ball go? Wow. Yeah, it's That's crazy. crazy. Yeah. Now, Tony La Russa said that that decision to start you game one of the NLDS against Greg Maddox will haunt him forever. Do you think that it was the moment, or do you think this is something that would have happened to you regardless at some point in your career? Yeah, great question. Um, and I think it's the, the unanswered question that will never be answered. I, I, when I, you know, I didn't go back and watch it for a long time. I didn't. And um, recently, when I wrote the book, when we did the documentary, I sat down and just really tried to study it. And, you know, there were some pitches in there that Mike Matheny would have caught, and maybe – it would he would have caught it and I would have been fine and then maybe it would have happened next game maybe it would happen five years maybe it never happened I don't know but it's what I do know is it's one of those things that sometimes we don't always know why and it's what the what are we gonna do about it right mm-hmm. then what are we gonna do about it so right. now we need to fix it right yeah it's it's it, it must be crazy <laughs> to watch yourself in that moment when you finally did go back and watch it did it feel like out of body did you or do did you you know all the memories kind of flash back to you and like oh yeah I remember thinking this was it like I was about to lose it so I was thinking that I was going to get this like pit in my stomach and the first time that I went back and watched it was with the writer Tim Brown who wrote my book and we sat down because obviously we need to go over it and write about it and um, I thought I was going to have this whatever and he opened the computer and I felt fine I watched it and I and I was actually surprised at how under control I looked on the mound as it was happening in the dugout 
after they took me out um i was like that's amazing because inside you know yeah my body and my brain was going haywire you know you're going oh my you know i just let my team down you have all these all those feelings you let the team down your town down your friends down you know all those things that, that come with that that was just you know it was, it, that's what i was surprised by that, right. that's really interesting so it's like getting out of your own head let you see the in the larger perspective that it wasn't as bad to everybody else as, as it was to you you were making it worse by putting all that pressure on yourself in the moment which i guess is like a natural thing yeah uh but then what do you you know how do you how do you replicate that how do you tell yourself like in the moment when you're going through something like that it's not as bad as you feel right now you know how do you regulate that anxiety and i don't know if there's an answer to that no i don't know if there is either because when you you know the, the anxiety is such a powerful um it's such a powerful thing man and that's and, and the people who go through the yips right whether it be golf whether it be whatever it may be i think what some people don't realize is that it consumes you and especially with athletes you know most of these guys or girls are obsessive about that sport and usually you're obsessing over how do i get better what do i do you're thinking about that all day you're in that world so now when you get the yips and you're going down that road now you're obsessing about bad and negative things and like it's taking you down a bad spiral mm -hmm. you know? yeah I, what, I was always curious uh what what are your teammates doing in a situation like this because you said you know baseball is obviously a very superstitious sport i would imagine baseball players thought they could catch the yips from you they thought it was yeah. like cold or something like how <laughs> what was the support like on a day-to-day -day basis when you're battling this um you have both. Uh, you have where you have guys putting your arm around you, trying to support you. Hey, what can you do? And then, and then the fear is real because if you know you would have been my teammate back then and known me at the at the time, you, you would have thought this isn't something that would happen to this kid. Um, and I think then the thought becomes real with everyone: like this can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, this is real. So it is a scary thing because, you know, I say this all the time: when you watch hitters, they go through the same thing. You see a hitter going through a slump yep. and he's over 30. You could call it the yips. I mean, let's be honest, they're swinging it. They could have a tennis racket and not hit the ball sometimes. Mm -hmm. But it's a reaction. And pitching like golf is an action, right? You create it. So the hitter, you can kind of mix into the slump. Oh, I had a mechanical thing. Like, you know, eventually you get a hit. Oh, you relax, you get out of it. But it's about the minutes are the same thing. And, and maybe some guys are better at not taking it home with them. Right. They can leave it at the field. Uh, no big deal. I'll figure it out. It's hitting three for 10 is a hall of fame. You know, it's different. Yeah. Um, but you know, pitching because of the action, you know, obviously you can't hide and mix in the line. You can go for four. Maybe you make a good play. You're still a hero. Right. It doesn't matter. Right. Pitching you're out there alone. It's true. Cause a uh, five, five wild pitches would be kind of similar to like five strikeouts and five strikeouts happen. Yeah. You know, guys yep. have mm -hmm. it. It doesn't happen often, but it happens. It Whereas five wild pitches, everyone's like, whoa, what's going on? You never talk here? about a, a pitching slump. Right. You never use those words. It's just like, oh, this guy stinks now. You just get yeah. sent down. Yeah. yeah. You get, yeah, yeah. you get designated. So when you were making your comeback as a hitter, did you find that the fact that you could fail, you know, two out of three times and still be successful, was that helpful to you? That's a fantastic question. Absolutely. Question. Yeah, because it was that that was it was like a relief. Like, whew, I go three for ten and I'm fine. Yeah, I can right. go over four and I make a diving play and like I'm high fiving because I made the great play of the game. Um, it, it's definitely a different dynamic, but it is a different grind um, on your body. Um, mentally, it can get hard also mm -hmm. don't get me wrong but yeah it but because of the pitching thing and then the ability to fail like you said um absolutely it made it like i got nothing to lose